We are continuing our Baha'ir and in enlighten our eyes, training people uh, how to protect their eyes and what they look at in order to gain more Kiddusha. We are on page 38, davening for help or praying for help. We, Yidin, always have the wonderful weapon of tefillah available in our arsenal. When feeling overwhelmed by the Yisr Hara, we can plead to Hashem in our own heartfelt words to save us, His beloved children from this monstrous attacker. Uh, help may not arrive at that very instant, but we need to keep on praying. It feels that a compelling force of demonic proportions, but Hashem can save us from the undesired pleasure. Let's remember that Hashem wants to help us more than we want to be helped. And when we contemplate the Nisyonot that bombard our brethren the world over, no doubt we will have them in mind in our tefillah too. So he gives you one of the tactics for today is tefillah. He tells you that praying has a has uh, an ability to help remove the temptation when it's there. Uh, and he also identifies that it's one of a compelling force of demonic proportions, which uh, seemingly is, I think, the right terminology for this type of ta'ava. Uh, part 2, page 39. Avoid temptation. Every man is obligated to, as much as possible, keep away from temptation's doorway. Mishaps are then simply less likely to occur. We need to assess the situations beforehand. What are our options? Sometimes it's just a matter of recharting a couple of our normal routes and usual haunts. Main streets are to be avoided in general where side streets are available. So he's telling you here, don't go on main streets or places where you know generally there's going to be sites that should be unseen. Uh, Okay, good tactic. Avoid those ways. It's brought down by Hazal many places. Uh, if a person goes behind the lion or behind the woman, the, you know, better to go behind the lion. If a person unnecessarily exposes himself to circumstances of risk, he is at fault, yes, even if he shuts his eyes. Because why? Because where was his fear of sin? You see, he came up to a situation of a, of a problem, but where was his fear to, to avoid that situation to begin with? Why was he so unconcerned about what he could encounter? His actions simply a degree of indifference to, the, to this serious issue. When it comes to, to matters of arayot and natural conditions of man, f- finds it so very fascinating and so sorely tempting. Chazal term it in Makot 23b, Nafsho shel adam mit avilahem umhamdatan. So it tells you a man's soul desires and craves these things. This is why we are required to take extra care to preempt any brush with alluring temptations or traps. The Arizal tells us how immodest mingling contaminates the very air being breathed to the extent that Abraham Avinu, as he neared the wicked land of Mitzrayim, suddenly became aware of Sarah's exquisite beauty, saying to her, Behold, now, I know that you are a woman of beautiful appearance. Wow, look at the Arizal on this one. That's a great one. The Arizal is saying here that when, a per, when immodest individuals are mingling, they contaminate the air, and it has an effect to the point that Abraham Avinu got affected when he went down to Mitzrayim, that he noticed Sarah's exquisite beauty that he, that he seemingly maybe was not so aware of before, but because that was the, you know, it says that Irvat Mitzrayim had the most, the most ta'avot that they did to the next level. Rav Shalom Shvadron Zatzal used to tell the following story about Rav Aharon Cutler Zatzal and his insistence on avoiding streets that were frequented by women. When Rav Aharon lived in Kletz, his home was some distance from the yeshiva. Using the main streets would entail Shemirat Enayim risks. So he went instead by way of backyard of the backyards, though he had to jump over fences and other such inconveniences. Interesting. It once happened that two Bachurim were at his uh, home discussing Torah until it was almost time to be back in yeshiva. He offered to escort them along his usual quick route behind the houses. They couldn't refuse. However, when they reached an alleyway with the big, fierce, prowling, prowling dogs, they were simply too scared to proceed. Rav Aharon instructed them to take hold of the hems of his coat and walk beside him. Trembling, they obeyed, and lo and behold, those dogs ignored him. Rav Aharon would happily ne- negoti- negotiate tall fences and dangerous hounds rather than streets where he would come across women. Didn't Chazal say in Berachot 61a that a man should walk behind the lion in preference to walking behind the woman, like we mentioned earlier? Being alert to pitfalls 
and danger zones, we can come up with alternative routes. We may decide that certain places are off limits and that's a personal decision that a person knows himself. If necessary, we can have a couple of polite excuse, excuses up our sleeve for tricky situations, ideas for avoiding clashes and some handy escape routes, uh, and also not really having to tell anyone that you're even doing this. You can just use the other one and say, ah, I don't want to be on the busy street or whatever, and, and avoid it. Baruch Adonai, Amen, Amen.